Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update the commodities, work our way through dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities ETFs that I follow. I'll interject my financial opinion as we go, and if you need help with anything, check out finding-value.com, where I dive deeper into individual companies, individual sectors, and you can see what I am doing personally uh, in these sectors and commodities. So let's dive in. Let's take a look and see what's going on with the markets. So we got, we're going to start with the DXY. And to me, this still looks bullish. We've got a broken trend line to the upside. So we're above the trend line. We broke out here. And this is what we do for a return move. And a lot of the times when you get close to support, you get these wicks. That means buyers are stepping in. They're buying it back up. So Generally, the dollar follows yields. This still is hanging on and it still looks good to potentially go higher if yields go higher and probably crude oil might be a big driver of all this. But short term, we are down a little bit right above support. The two-year yield did drop a little bit today. It did come down a teeny bit. We're back to support of this horizontal trend line. We're right on top of it. It still looks good to give an effort to go up, but we want to monitor to see what the follow through is, if there is any, uh, tomorrow, the next trading day, because we do have a bearish engulfing where, where it could push us a little bit lower in the short term. Perhaps we go back in the pattern and then come back out. Kind of difficult to say in the really short term. If you were to look on it from a really, really short term perspective, you can see the rollover back to support here, but we do have a potential pattern where we could go lower, but we're at support. So that's where I, I'm talking about a potential move lower back into the pattern, maybe. Um, we're going to have to monitor it and see exactly which way this uh, the two-year yield is going to go. 10-year yield down a little bit, down 1.45, and it still has this inverted flag pattern that it's still carving out, uh, potentially. So that is still a potential. And we did get a bearish engulfing pattern today where we could head lower in the short term. And then the 30-year, again, a little bit lower, down 1.25. It could extend further to the downside. But we are above support, which is that horizontal support level. There is support in this general region all through here that we are sitting on top of. So that's going to give us support for us to maybe sit here and decide which direction it wants to go. We still have this bearish flag pattern uh, that does exist. TYX TNX ratio down slightly, we are still inverted. Here's your big inversion party down here. Uh, if we back out, you can even see where this inversion came from. It came from up here, came all the way down, your buy signal for gold, which occurred in uh, August, September of 2022. That's when it was going to bottom out, roughly speaking. And then gold's been taken off and this has been inverted. Generally, gold is sniffing out a slowdown, fear in the market, uh, potential lowering of interest rates. And that's what we're looking for with the interest rates over here is we're looking for a potential lowering move where the yield curve uninverts. Uh, could this be a shoulder head, shoulder developing where this uninverts? It very well could be. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. And that is also a factor of why gold, I think, is moving higher. One of the factors. Bond prices are up today. Here we are. And remember, they go opposite of yields. So yields down, bond prices are up. And I could probably grab this guy and put this down. Let me see if it works here. Um, kind of the, the channel that we've got going on here. Kind of an ugly looking thing, doesn't fit very well, but it does look like we are trying to put in a little bit of a stance to try to move higher here. Uh, with this bullish piercing candlestick there, and it, it doesn't have a ton of selling pressure uh, it, in this right-hand side over there. It makes me think that we're gonna to try to move on up, which means yields could pull on back. And then the two and 10, the curve inverted, 
uh, while it was going down. So the short end fell less than the longer end. So the two year fell less than the 10 year resulting in the curve inverting a little bit. So we were at a very inverted yield curve. Uh, and again, the crashes generally occur when the curve uninverts. And when it uninverts, that is when people get a little bit panicky. Gold up $18 an ounce. It is still going up. We are getting a little bit of a slowdown, a little bit of wicks on the tops, uh, but the trend is still upward, undeniably. Um, we do not have a reversal candlestick yet, but that would be something that you might be looking for. Now, would I, would I be a buyer up here? No, I, guys, you should have bought the breakout down here uh, if you're a gold buyer. Silver, um, looking good. Momentum still going to the upside. And got a little bit of volatility these past three days, both directions, up and down. So we've been, we've been working the volatility in silver. But it looks great. We've broken out. And what I'll say is uh, I think the trend is that way by a long shot. Uh, platinum also up, and that does look like we are playing with and flirting with a uh, downtrend line that we are trying to break out. We got a little bit of selling pressure there. Uh, last time we got up here, we could see we got a little bit of selling pressure there, and we got a little bit of selling pressure uh, there for platinum. Uh, I think it looks fantastic. Give it time, and I think we'll break out of here. And uh, our boy Platy will be in a full run. It'll be run for us run. Palladium. Look at Palladium, guys. This looks really good. Uh, I'm licking my chops here, guys. This looks really good. Uh, big bullish engulfing. We pull back with smaller candlesticks to touch where the support level is. False little breakout down here. Give us a little bit of a slingshot retest. Bam! Thank you, ma'am. There we go. Ripping today. We're up 4.33% in Palladium. And we got a nice big bullish engulfing here and here. And we've got support underneath us on the long term going across here. There's a lot of support in this buying and selling pressure down here. So that's looking pretty good. And again, I don't know if we're just going to rock it to the moon. It also looks like Elliott Wave style. Um, this is your A, B. This is your wave five count. A, B, C is down here, correction, double bottom, which is this here is an inverted head and shoulders, which is going to work its way on up if you guys really want to get jiggy with it. Uh, going into XAU to goal ratio, we're up 1.6% roughly. We have uh, basically, here's the, the need to break this line for happiness. And what have we done? Uh, we're basically breaking it or very close to it, depending on what time frame and if you use closing of the candlesticks versus the wicks on the candlesticks. Um, the closings on the monthlies, if, if we can break and close this month where we're at, it would be a breakout. Um, if you use the wicks on the top, it might be a little bit higher than this. Like we might be right at that breakout, depending on how you draw this in and what time frame you're using. Uh, I'm going to call it that we are broken because the majority of the support occurs where things close at. Either way, debatable or not, um, this is a great entry point for gold and silver mining companies for a longer term hold. We are at ridiculously low levels, and I think that this will eventually work its way up. It doesn't have to do it immediately. You know, we could sit down here for a little while, but we've broken the trend line. That's the big deal. We could sit down here for a month even. I doubt it, but we could. Uh, so prepare your expectations and become more patient and let this play out. This is a big deal because generational wealth could be generated uh, in this move over the next decade or something like that. The CRB index is down a little bit today. Uh, I think oil was a little bit lower today. Um, still looks good. Momentum still to the upside, and it's not a huge selling pressure candlestick. Um, nothing I'd be shaking my knees at. CRB to S&P 500, uh, this still looks fantastic to move higher. Uh, what I see is a flag pattern. Generally, when you go into an uptrend, you see dominant green, big candlesticks and small selling pressure. This is just small selling pressure uh, where I think it will eventually work its way on up.
So that still looks good for the CRV index in relationship to the S&P 500. And we've got miles of miles and miles of room for upward progress uh, of this ratio in terms of valuation. GDX up 1.73%, looking fantastic, feeling fantastic. Now, I, I drew this on the monthly candlesticks here. I drew them on the closing prices. Now, some people like to draw them up on the candlesticks where the wicks are at, which we pass through on a day or a month or a week. We just went whoop, like that. We didn't close there. Um, I always think that the closing prices are the stronger because now if we close, uh, whether it be a weekly or a monthly, it would be a strong closing. And this is here on the uh, weekly charts. We haven't broken on the weekly yet if you use the, the, the wicks. So we're still looking good. Um, GDXJ, we've definitely broken this no matter what time frame you use. Uh, it's looking pretty good. And again, we've had a pretty big run here uh, from the corner of about 3150 all the way to 4265. We're not going to run forever. We're going to get a consolidation. We could get a pullback, uh, but that wouldn't scare me, guys. We could even do a retest of this and pull back like that or something. I'm not stating that's what I am expecting. I'm just saying that it is possible. But it looks really good, and I think we've got a longer-term bull market on our hands here. SILJ also looking quite strong, up 2% today. Not a strong candlestick all that much, but again, the momentum is to the upside. Uh, we did have a little bit of a pause here in the middle, kind of that, and a lot of the times what you want to do is you kind of do one of these things and then you bring it back up. So it's somewhere in that range of where we're at, depending on where you put the, the candlestick of a full maybe move here. Uh, so we could consolidate, it is a possibility, uh, but that doesn't mean on the longer term that it won't go up. It just means we could consolidate for a little bit a day or two or a week or whatever, and then work our way back on up. Crude oil down 1.27%. It is a bearish engulfing, and we could see uh, a little bit of a pullback or sideways move to consolidate this move. Uh, the move's been pretty relentless from about December of 23. We've been working our way on up. Um, and again, it's a short-term candlestick where we could consolidate sideways to slightly lower. We'll have to see what the follow through looks like. TTF gas, a uh, little down day today. Still looks good to go higher. It's a bearish or a bullish candlestick with a little bloody nose. So still looking good. Sideways or higher is what I would expect. Uh, you can also draw this in here. That's also broken, that downtrend. So it looks, it looks good. Natural gas up 2.77%. We'll probably struggle to get through this resistance line that I've got going across there. Um, it could either struggle right above it uh, or struggle right below it like that. Uh, and we'll see what it looks like. It's working its way on up. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me, doesn't look that bad in my opinion. Uh, we, we were up 0.09%. And this is just moving sideways. Not much selling pressure, no reversal candlesticks really. Um, we have had a pretty big move here, guys. I mean, this has been pretty relentless uh, move to the upside there. Uh, but we've broken the neckline, everything looks good, and we still look good even, even now. OIH also down a little bit. We have a reversal candlestick uh, here that is a called a bearish piercing. It gaps up and then closes below the 50th percentile of this candlestick before it. Uh, but there wasn't a ton of follow through. If there was a ton of selling pressure, you'd see a big down candlestick where you really sell off. A lot of the times you might get some wicks on the bottom where people come in and they buy it back up uh, throughout the day, which means there's buyers still there. So we could try to reverse this in the short term. Not that I care about the short term that much, but it's possible to reverse this. And we'll have to see what tomorrow trading looks like. Sprout Physical Uranium Trust, um, I think it's doing all right. Why do I think that? It's holding on. Uh, we're basically moving sideways. We do have some instances of bullish engulfings and bigger green candlesticks showing up. There's still some selling pressure here, though. Um, kind of a larger bearish engulfing there, and we're up against support now. So let's see what what it, let's see what uh, follow through trading sessions look like. 
Um, this could get very bullish or bearish quickly in either direction, depending on what it looks like here. Uh, URA down a little bit, but it's holding on. Um, you know, some people will probably be saying that this could be like a double top. Uh, it could be the Batman uh, in the short term. It's possible. But again, I think that's too early to state that uh, if that really is. And I, I'm what I'm doing is I'm going to remain bullish for the upside. I'm not trying to play the short term market movements. URNM down a little bit, but it doesn't look that bad, guys. We're above support. That blue line going across. We've got tons of buying and selling that's occurred right underneath us. Um, we're on top of that. That says something. So, yes, we got a bearish engulfing here. It came back down to support. And we'll see if the support holds. And we'll see what the candlesticks look like next. That's what is in question. URNJ doing the same thing. We are above massive support there. Tons of trading occurred there, which is your buyers and sellers. If this comes back down, I'm willing to bet that we'll find support here in the 2550 level. Still doesn't look horrible. It, I mean, we've got this bearish engulfing. It hasn't been resolved yet. We're still in a downward momentum move in the short, short term. But um, it's not. we're not just falling off a cliff. We don't have these big uh, red candlesticks, uh, at least not yet. Tan up likes the yields going down. That does look like it wants to try to go up. Uh, at least in this section box there. We've got uh, copper. Copper continues to work its way on up slowly, looking pretty good. Momentum's to the upside. Uh, you're probably going to see a lot of bullish people on copper here. Uh, COPX up 2.7%, uh, looking very strong, feeling strong, looking strong, right into the bullish engulfing. Boom, punched it higher again. Uh, looks really good in C COPX, the, the ETF. Very, very good there. We've got lithium uh, up a little bit, 1.8%. It's been chilling out here. It does like lower yields. It, it kind of follows uh, whatever TAN does to some extent, but kind of an interesting looking mix here. I could also bring this up, put it on the closings here and say that we're, we're kind of breaking out almost. REMX also breaking out too, uh, up 3%. Looks pretty strong actually. Um, you know, if, if you like REMX, I like it here, guys. I'll just say that. And that's what I do for the members. Um, I look at cer certain things. We've got a bullish engulfing here, kind of a, a new high being developed here. Uh, it could be a bottom, and, and I think it looks not that bad. It's at a pretty low price, too. Um, S&P 500. Oh, man. We still have this fat bearish engulfing here and no response from the buyers. Uh, so... Uh, what I do is I continue to say sideways to lower uh, from this pattern until I see otherwise. And we've broken the rising wedge to the downside. So that's the direction I think the S&P 500 uh, is probably going to go in the short term. Uh, NASDAQ has the same type of setup. Um, I mean, to me, guys, this looks like a top to me. But, you know, I don't like coming on here trying to call tops. People are going to be like, oh, you missed that call if it goes on up. We're in an election year. Plunge protection team is going to try to push this thing higher. Um, to me, this looks like a top here. And then the Batman pattern. There's your Batman right there. Uh, that's what it looks like. Potentially, we went into a, a rising wedge with a bearish engulfing here, here, and here. Uh, that screams that it's a topping pattern. But for some reason, this thing continues to go up. Uh, so. I'm going to hold my judgment, and my view is that this could roll over. KRE likes the lower yields, uh, so we're up a little bit. Likes it, likes it, likes it. Uh, emerging markets likes those lower dollar yields, so it's it's struggling to go up, but it's going up. Uh, XHB was flat today, much like the overall markets, but we were flat. Um, we do have some bearish signals here and here that generally work their way lower, and we'll see if it can overcome that. Moo up 0.87, that still looks fantastic uh, to move on up. We've broken the downtrend here, this basic falling wedge, and I do think that we could work our way on up sideways to higher on it. Iron ore up a little bit. It does look like it's trying to put in a bottom here, and I think we could potentially still go higher in iron ore, which is good uh, if you're looking at some of the diversified mining companies and stuff like that. Nickel up 0.64%. Again, I think this is trying to bottom and work its way on up. I would be a buyer in it. 
uh, aluminum, um, slightly lower, uh, but basically a flat day. Everything still looks good. Momentum's to the upside for aluminum, and we could get a big move with this kind of a long basing pattern here where we could fire our way on up, which I think is in progress. Baltic dry index down. We're back to this general support location. I think it will turn around because coal doesn't look that bad. Iron ore doesn't look that bad. And that's really the components of the Baltic dry index, some of the larger components. We haven't broken out yet, but we're going to get a big breakout here. And I am seeing strength in the coal stocks. And again, if you guys are interested in knowing what those coal stocks are, we talk about those. And we've had some entry points already. Um, with some of the smaller names that pay big dividends and buying back shares. Um, so and we, we do have that LEAP coupon code going on. But if you're interested, uh, there's your setup there. I think we're going to break higher in coal futures here. Now, Bitcoin's looking a little bit nasty here. Uh, bearish engulfing looks like we want to go lower. We've got one here. We've got one here. Uh, and the overall stock market looks kind of nasty, too. So we could see a pullback. Uh, in Bitcoin, NASDAQ, S&P 500, Ethereum's also getting a little bit of selling pressure. This one doesn't look as bad, but we are starting to see some stronger selling pressure through this region here. Uh, you could also look at this and say maybe uh, it's kind of like a flag pattern going on here uh, where we could break to the downside. Now, again, you can make a lot of these patterns look a certain way. And I know we're in an election year and they might want to try to push this higher, the NASDAQ and S&P, which liquidity wise could push Ethereum and Bitcoin higher. So you got to pay attention to the market conditions and where we're at, uh, not just the charts themselves, although the charts do suggest certain things. SMCI down. This doesn't look that great, guys. This looks like it wants to go lower. It looks like a topping pattern to me. And NVIDIA is another one that doesn't look fantastic. It held together today, which makes me think that someone's in there trying to hold this thing together. But selling pressure here, no more selling pressure, more selling pressure. Those are all bearish engulfing patterns. A lot of the time what occurs is you get a large selling pressure move, and then it struggles to go up within the candlestick. Then you get another selling pressure move at the top of the candlestick, and then you sell off from there. Uh, that happens a lot, and I've seen it in a lot of the patterns. Now, again, we'll see what occurs here. I know this is one of the larger stocks, and I know that if someone were to manipulate the market, they're going to try to manipulate probably NVIDIA and some of these larger uh, companies to try to, to try to hold everything up. But Bezos sold his shares. Zuckerberg sold his shares. Uh, Bill Gates is out of the market. So a lot of these guys exited. Good old Zucky, he's out. He sold a lot of his stock. Not everything, but he sold a lot. Uh, this is probably into uh, getting close to a, a peak, perhaps. Uh, but that's what I've got for today, guys. Give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the website if you guys like. We still have LEAP, the coupon code, going on. Uh, if you're interested in any of these sectors that look interesting to you and you want to know uh, specific companies of how to play it, you want either uh, dividend payers or smaller cap companies that maybe give you more leverage to the upside uh, or whatever, I can help you uh, find companies like that. And you guys can make the decision if you want to invest in those or not. Um, I can't advise or anything like that. I can tell you what I'm doing. Um, you can ask me questions and I'll tell you what I can do and the companies that I like, but uh, that's all I can basically do. All right, guys, uh, that's what I've got for today. We'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.